So now in this video we're going to look at this diagram which I'm uh, pretty sure I made specifically for the website since it illustrates a lot and then I had uh, written out what each thing means but we're just going to go over it in a video form as well. So all the push button switches that I have are normally open meaning there's a gap between the uh, two terminals. There's four pins there and these top two pins make up one terminal the bottom two pins make up another terminal. You can see it's much uh, thinner right there much wider there. The uh, wider side, which uh, separates top to bottom terminals, fits across the gap down, running down the breadboard pretty well right there. They go, they land right in place, and they did when it was new. It was probably more, a little tougher um, when I first got it. They probably shifted slightly, but for the most part it uh, fit across this gap. Also, especially these higher quality breadboards, they kind of got a tight squeeze when you first get them and these pins are not like component leads they are wider you could probably take a screwdriver like straighten them a little bit uh, uh, twist them or something so they go sideways it fits better um, but you know they're not terrible but um, it does take a little while for the spot to get used to them so I kind of devote these uh, spots there for this switch down here it would not it'd be tighter fit down there but in any case uh, let's get to it so to begin with this orange jumper right there, it's not plugged in all the way, but uh, if it was, then it would connect the positive supply to all the holes in that row right there. They're all connected, five across right there. Some of the reorb, they're separated as you go down the line. Now, with the uh, switch right here, first off, we have top terminal and the bottom terminal. So if I move the orange jumper down here now, and uh, I'll do a demonstration of this uh, later. Then we have a connection going uh, these five holes. They're all connected. Two spots are taken up though. And then uh, these five holes over there are now all connected. That's all one connection. But as we keep plugging more things in, we got less holes to work with. Um, but we started off with five, added this jumper that gave us four, added the switch there, and then that gives us four more holes that we could work with uh, in this particular circuit right there. If I press the button, now, this orange jumper is connected still over there that stays the same but also down here these other uh, 10 holes two of them taken up though so we got eight more holes there that are now uh, a direct connection to this orange jumper which is going to the positive supply right there something to be aware of so let's move on from there right now this would be a high side switch so what that means is that the switch is to the positive supply and I'm not sure what variations um, there could be. Typically it's a high side versus a low side. And, um, but uh, it may not be directly to the positive supply, but there's probably a load and the load here is definitely towards ground. Ground is considered the low side right there. I have five volts at the, uh, the rail uh, right there. And uh, I limit current to 20 milliamps current in case I miss wire or something which uh, is pretty easy to do while I'm doing these demonstration videos because I'm going to be uh, swapping out uh, components. But um, that's something to be aware of. When you're building circuits, you got to make sure you undo something that you got to undo. So we will uh, look at that. We can take uh, the red LED and we don't need the switch if we come uh, to this spot here at all. And 220 ohm resistor going to be fairly bright with five volts right there. So. We got uh, those four. But uh, coming over here, this is uh, not a connection anymore. I'm going to move this uh, switch um, over to there and then bring this jumper there. So that is not a connection now. Looks like I wired it uh, properly. But I can take the switch here and now you can see that it does go across. So that's something you'll see in my circuits every once in a while. I'll have a switch or something and uh, I'll be wiring something over here when the supply is over there and it'll work its way uh, somewhere else until uh, right now there's no point to the switch other than it's uh, bridging the gap there we could just use a little jumper uh, but uh, if we wanted it to switch something we could also do that just to be aware of that so in any case we will actually do that I can bring the LED down here and then now bring the resistor there so now we got our high side switch I press the button it's coming across that way right there and of course we can put it over here 
actually now I gotta move the jumper so this is what I was talking about when I said you gotta be careful when you're rewiring stuff so I should have planned it better but you know when you rewire something um, you know you, you didn't plan for that ahead of time you thought it would look better a different way but yeah we can just uh, switch it uh, directly bottom to top there or at an angle when the button is pressed right there something to always be aware of these two are always connected those two are always connected so that's a high side switch right there let's do a low side switch and um, so I commonly do this with my 555 timer circuits especially I can think of where um, the switch the output of the 555 timer when it's low I want the blue LED to light up and uh, so we're going to uh, wire it up uh, kind of like that so we got uh, positive supply there doesn't matter what order, resistor or LED comes first. Long lead the anode though, has to be towards the more positive side of the circuit. That's the anode of the LED there. Short lead the cathode is uh, down toward the negative supply. Arrows coming out. So that's a diode symbol. Just a regular rectifier diode without the arrows. With the arrows, that's an LED. So it's emitting light. So if arrows are coming out, that means it's emitting something. If arrows are going in, that means it's you know headed towards a component. That means it's responding to something, maybe light, maybe radiation, uh, depending on the arrows or whatever. So just be aware of that. But yeah, now it's a low side switch. When I press the switch, it connects to ground right there. So that's what I mean when I say low side right there. So those are, uh, you know, I think most of the things you got to know about uh, these push button switches on a breadboard. I think that pretty much uh, covered everything that you need to get by for basic electronics. But um, you know, like when somebody says open, that means there's a gap. When they say closed, that means it's a solid connection. Probably between two points, maybe between more than two points. There's all kinds of switch options out there. Um, but for the push button switch, it's pretty simple. Some of them are normally closed, and uh, you got to press the button to make a gap. And uh, so I think uh, the dot would be over. You know, it'd be like this without the finger. I, I just draw the finger. I don't know that anybody else does that. Uh, but if it's normally closed, I think that line would be there, and then the uh, little bubble there would come down this way to indicate when you push it, that makes a gap. Hopefully that makes sense, but I don't have any push button switches like that. Um, you should definitely, if you buy them, make sure it says normally open, if that's what you want. Um, probably that's what they're going to be. So um, if you really want a normally closed, that's when you're going to have to search uh, for the normally closed. I think if you just get a switch uh, that is on off you got to actually press it to turn it on to close it then I think it's going to be normally open the, the vast majority of the time right there be aware of that but uh, you will hear from time to time the high side of the circuit the low side of the circuit or high side switch low side switch and so on so that terminology can be confusing when you hear it uh, you know for the first time even if I haven't heard it haven't been uh, you know thinking about switches for a long time Somebody will say like high side, low side. It might take me a little time to kind of register what they're talking about. Same with open and closed. So those are things to stay on top of and um, not confusing, but um, something you don't think about every day. So when you hear it out of nowhere, haven't heard it for a long time, it may seem kind of confusing, but it's not too bad. So thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen and check out links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.